Okay, here we have post-trib moment number three, and here he's <clears throat> lying again. Uh, he seems to be very good at that. I'm going to play a little bit here, and we'll see his lie. We're going to be reunited with them, and this is not mentioning the tribulation whatsoever. There's no mention here of, well, <clears throat> you know, let's comfort you and tell you you're not going to go through the tribulation. You know, the comfort is that you're not going to suffer. That's not what it's saying at all. The comfort is that you're going to see your loved ones again. Okay. Now, what he wants you to believe there is that uh, the rapture, which is what 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18 is talking about, the pre-tribulation rapture, he's trying to say that that has no connection to the rapture and things because the comfort there has nothing to do with you know being taken out before the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, well, let me just show you a big problem there. If he's right that this is about the dead saints coming up with the living saints, and that this somehow is not to be a comfort for a pre-tribber. Let me just show you something. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, the most cited passage for the post-tribbers. Okay, now let's go down here. <clears throat> Talks about the coming of the Son of Man here. See, the coming of the Son of Man. And it says here in verse 40, then shall, be, then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, uh, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Uh, could you please show me a dead saint being taken up here into the clouds? Do um, you see any dead saints going up into the clouds there? Hmm. Uh, I don't see any. Well, let's go to... Uh, Perhaps over in Mark chapter 13. Let's see if there's any dead in Christ going up here. Okay, here we have, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and or with great power and glory. Um, by the way, let me just go up here. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Um, Where's that at in First Thessalonians chapter 4? Not in there. Two different events. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Speaking about the whole world. Uh, again, not the rapture. Then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Where is there a resurrection of dead saints in there? I mean, you say, well, it's it's in there, the, the gathering to... Show me a resurrection of dead in Christ. It's not in there. Now let's go to Luke 17. Okay, here we have in... Here you have again the, the coming of the Son of Man, you know, compared to the days of Noah. Look down here at verse 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Where is there a resurrection of dead saints? Again, where is the dead in Christ rising first? It's not in there. Why? Because it's two different events. Look at this. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said, you know, What's the where? The where is where are they taken. Where, Lord, and he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. He's talking about the battle of Armageddon in Revelation chapter 19. You say, I don't believe it. Okay, let me just zip over there quick. Revelation chapter 19. Down here. Um, Revelation 19, 17. I saw an angel standing in the sun, and, cry, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together under the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Okay? What's going on here? This is where the Jews are taken. They're, they run away from this army of the Antichrist. Okay, and here you have it. I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he had deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and they that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain 
with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Okay, right there you have it. That's where the Jews are taken. They're, they run away from the Antichrist, from his armies. They flee into the mountains, like you're talk, talks about in Revelation chapter 24, about getting out of there. And they're out there, I believe, for three and a half years. And the Antichrist eventually goes out to try and wipe them out. And at that point in time, Jesus Christ comes back and destroys the Antichrist and his army. So you have those people there in Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Luke 17. And by the way, just for the record, let's go to Luke 21. Because there's some more stuff about Christ's second coming here. Let me show you a couple of these verses. Okay, here we have in verse 25, There shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the seas, the sea and the waves roaring. Again, this is second coming. First Thessalonians or First Corinthians chapter fifteen talks about in a moment in the twinkling of an eye that we are called up to be with the Lord. This has nothing to do with the second coming. Okay? And it talks about men's hearts feeling them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Okay? When these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Is that dead saints that are looking up? No. It's living tribulation saints. There is no resurrection of dead saints in the Gospels. The resurrection of the body of Christ happens at the rapture before the time of Jacob's trouble. Steve Anderson is a liar.